I know exactly what you guys are thinking. How are corks even made in the first place? They aren't from cubes, I can tell you that. But that's how we're going to make them today. Let's dive right in and get started. Open a brand new blender scene, and I'm going to go to the front view. I'm going to turn my screencast keys too, so you can see exactly what keys I'm pressing on my keyboard. And so down here in the bottom left corner, you can see exactly what those keys are. I'm going to go into edit mode by hitting tab, go into wireframe, and select these top four points. If you don't go into wireframe, you won't get all four of them. I'm going to hit S to scale and move it up by hitting G just a little bit. This is going to be the basic shape of the cork. I'm going to go to modifiers tab and click add modifier subdivision surface. You can see it's not quite the shape we want, but to fix that, we can just hit control R, click here in the middle, and move it near the top. Do the same thing with the bottom. If we go into edit mode and solid, you can see that it doesn't quite look like the cork shape. First off, we can just increase these. It will look a little better already. I'm going to hit shade smooth, but you can see that it still doesn't look quite right. I'm going to go into the front view again and go back into edit mode. I'm going to go back into wireframe as well. I'm going to select these top four points and hit E and then just right click. That will extrude and then place it in the same exact location. Now if we hit S, it'll scale it down. This is a this is an easy way of insetting. There's also an inset tool, I think, somewhere over here. But this is a, one easy way of doing that pretty quickly using hotkeys. I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom now here too. So E, right click, scale. Now go back out into solid view and we have that basic cork shape. This is the basic shape of the cork and we're not really going to do too much more as far as modeling it. We're going to use some of the displacement attributes to be able to do the rest of the work for us. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the, the shader tab. And so if you want to do that, you just need to hover right above the corners here. So like right here in the bottom right corner, you can pull that up and to close it, you just hover in the, that same corner and pull down. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here to Shader Editor and I'm gonna start making the shader. Maybe what I should do is I'm gonna turn this on to Cycles and then GPU Compute and I'm going to uh, turn denoising on for that so they can see it a little bit easier real time. You can also do this as well. Your computer may not be able to handle it the same exact way. So I'm going down here into the shader here and we can see, we'll can we be able to see exactly what, it, what we put in here. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, Add Search and I'm going to start by adding a noise texture. If your cursor goes off and you lose it you can just right click or escape and it will just cancel it and then I'm just going to connect the factor to the base color just so you can see what this looks like and if I connect the color to the base color those are the two things that they are and these are essentially the same thing just one's black and white and one's got color now I'm going to add a color ramp throw that in there and uh, this will allow us to be able to make things crisper make it negative we can play with the values a little bit easier here with the color ramp I'm going to pull up in my picture here so we're going to start by making these uh, shapes right here and all of these let's add uh, one more texture coordinate and do an object to vector. This will map it correctly for us. For the values for this noise texture, I'm going to do 3.5, 16, 0 0.8, and 0. So this is going to be our general rough pattern for the cork. This is the rough, this is the general one, this lighter, not so indented version of it. And then for our color ramp, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to pull this white all the way over here, and I'm going to make it black. And the reason for this is I can make this one a gray. So you can see the, the values here. You have black and white. And if I make this in gray, it will just desaturate that. We're, we want to work with uh, black as our base and then white as what we are indenting. So um, that's why they're flipped. And we're going to do that with all of these today because when we add, we want to add white. You don't, you can't really add black. So you can only add white because white has a value of one. If you go in here to the factor, the value is what we really care about. This one has a value of zero. This one has a value of one. So when we use uh, mathematical operations after this, like the mix RG right here and when we click on add right there we can increase this factor and it will be increasing it that value of one or zero so we will be using this let's hold off on this for a second okay so now let's set up our displacement here so I'm gonna hit shift a search for displacement and I'm gonna throw this color into the height then throw the displacement and displacement and you can see that we've actually got some we actually do have some displacement just to show you what it looks like I'm going to take off the base color and uh, I'm also going to go into the material output here click options and then settings and then change displacement from bump only to displacement and bump and you can see we have a huge bump now. This is because we need to play with some of these settings. We, we're treating this because of the way that I've set this up with the black being our base. Our mid-level is actually going to be zero. And then we're adding one. This would actually push out 
points and we want to do the opposite so i'm going to just throw that as a negative one and you can see that we've got indents already happening onto our our thing here and these are physical uh, bumps you can see right here the geometry actually does come in and it displaces and that's because we did displacement and bump so there's happening both of them and this is good but you can see that it looks kind of garbage uh, that's what i would say it doesn't look good at all if you increase your subdivisions over here in your modifier as high as you as your computer can handle it without uh, working it too hard that's where you're going to get a lot of the details from with the displacement the bump doesn't matter with this but the displacement does i'm going to throw this to a six level and your computer probably can take a six as well as if it's fairly new so yeah that's looking pretty good i'm going to start if we play with these you can see that we can decrease them but the big thing here is is that they're too deep so this is why the y over here we can make it a little darker and it will make them less bumpy now that actually looks like a cork material. Okay, next I'm gonna make another noise texture. And a tip for you is to work with each texture separately. So we will use this add, but work with them separately at first. And then that will allow you to separate the concerns between each other. So when I type in color ramp here, and I put that in and I flip that again, we can see exactly what this noise is doing. So this noise texture, for this to work correctly, I'm gonna throw the object on there. I'm going to change its values to 2.1, 10 and a half and uh, that can be stay 0.5 and that's zero. Yep, so that looks great. Okay, so now what this one's gonna do, is this is gonna be our, our deeper holes. The, the thing with the corks is there's less of the deeper holes, but they're deeper, so they're magnified. And that's why the scale is a little bit smaller. Smaller scale actually means bigger noise. With a larger scale, that means that you're gonna get more noise in there, which results in smaller noise patterns. So I'm gonna take this down so we get a very minimal amount of those holes, maybe even maybe even a little bit more. Yeah, something like that. So we have some big, bigger holes here, and then I'm going to do the same thing we did with the other one and just darken that a little bit to, so it doesn't cut clear through there. That's looking pretty good. Okay, so now how do we add these? This is actually not too bad as long as you've done the black base. So if you come in here with the color, you can just throw that up here into the add that we created earlier and I'm gonna add 100% throw that into our height and boom that's all you have to do for that as long as the black is your base that's the big thing here so okay next let's just duplicate these and we can change the values to them so I'm gonna hit shift D to do that come in here object into there and throw that color into the height now you can see we've got the exact same thing we had before because we duplicated it and that's fine across the top of corks often they have this stripe pattern like this elongated pattern you can see on here that's what a lot of corks I saw when I was doing some research on this and I suggest you do the same just go on Google look at a whole bunch of corks and that'll help you get the gist of what what you're trying to do but this is gonna be stripes across there as if something like cut it that's what it kind of resembled to me so for this one what we're gonna do is a scale of a half uh, 16 uh, point seven and point nine so now you can see we've got a couple things here this distortion you can see that it's doing some some interesting like pulling patterns for it and that's okay the main thing we want to do here is add a mapping node right here and throw it in there what we're going to want to do with this one is we're just going to take the scale and we're going to take this and do it 15 1 15 and that will pull it along this axis and that's exactly that's pretty close to what we want already okay so now here's the thing with this one though we don't want the scratching patterns throughout the entire cork something you could do here is i'm going to actually add a paint layer that we can take and throw in here so this is kind of an advanced concept but this will give you more freedom in other projects that you have so I'm come up here to where it says object mode and I'm gonna click on vertex paint and you can see if you just click and drag it doesn't really do much that is because I have this set to white but if I click on it and make it black and come in here to if you're in the rendered shading you're gonna have to come into the viewport but if you click and drag you can see that it's creating a black top and that's what we want here so go ahead and do that okay so now we have that top is black just check to make sure it looks pretty good all the way around now if we go in here to the green tab uh, this is the object data and we can come into the colors right here vert vertex colors and there's a there's a layer called coal you can come in here now and just create an attribute for that name it coal and just to show you what this is I'm gonna go back to rendered here go to object mode and then I'm gonna throw this color up here into the base color and you can see it's what we just painted we can use that value that we just made and plug that in here so I'm gonna hit uh, mix RGB again throw that in here and then throw the color into the factor and you can see it's done some crazy stuff here so what we want to do here is we want to just mix it with black we don't want to add it we want to mix it so now if you look at this we have no texture and then up here we get texture there's kind of like a fade right
right here. And that's actually exactly what we want because around the corners, they're gonna be indented. So this is this is looking pretty good. Okay, so next we wanna just duplicate this and then do the same thing we did before. I'm gonna move it over here just for simplicity right here. Stretch these things out. Okay, and I'm gonna throw that into the height. It's looking pretty good. So there's a couple uh, concerns that I just have with this. It looks like it's a little bit too rough to my, for my eyes, I think, at least on these big ones. So that was right here. All we have to do is take them out by dragging this around here. So dragging the right side of this will make them more limited and dragging this closer will make it harsher. So we want to make it harsher and then I'm going to make it something like that. So if you want in those values, um, I have a position of 0.336 and a position of 0.191 and then that is 0.392 for the left side and this is black. So it's going to be completely zero um, if that's what you're wanting for that. So this is the basic node setup for this. Now the only thing we have left to do is just add the color. So go over here to base color and let's give it a cork looking color, maybe a little bit brighter and then um, maybe more saturation. Let's, let's see right there. Let's do that. I think that's looking pretty good. So next what we're going to want to do is we're going to add some subsurface. Now in, in a lot of other softwares, you'll pr like you use subsurface usually all the way and there's other parameters that you work with. In Blender, I've noticed that it works better if you don't do that. If you give it like a 0.2 or whatever subsurface and you can play with the subsurface radius here but I find that this has more effect on it if there's any other results that you find let me know in the comments below but now I'm just gonna go ahead and click on this and then maybe make this one darker and make this one a little lighter something like that so now we have the soft edge that on a cork it would have on a cork it has kind of softer edges okay so now something else is the specularity if you play with this number um, this will affect like the glossiness I guess like, that kind of look like how much shine or how much light bounces off this so there is a little bit on a cork but there's not much so I I found that like somewhere around 0 0.2 0 0.3 that's kind of like where you want it. maybe in 0.4 and then uh, your roughness corks are pretty rough so just throw that value up something like that but that's looking pretty good that's looking like a cork and if we run this out that's that's pretty much the cork so thank you for watching this video and i hope to see you next time on blender know-how